I'm Kevin Gale, voice of the Crusaders, and this is Seder Stories, the official podcast of Holy Cross Athletics, presented by UMass Memorial Health. On this very special episode, I'm joined by not one, but two Crusaders on their journey from Holy Cross to the NFL Draft. I'm joined by record-setting wide receiver Jalen Coker and All-American guard C.J. Hansen. We're recording this episode just two weeks ahead of the NFL Draft, so the dream is getting closer to a reality. Jalen, C.J., thanks so much for joining me. Great to see you both. Jalen, let me start with you. What's the anticipation like right now, counting down to these final days before draft day? You know, it's uh, it's good. You know, it's a good problem to have. You know, I'm uh, worked really hard. Me and CJ both have worked really hard to get to this position, you know, and I feel like we put in all the work and everything that's been asked of us to, you know, demonstrate why we deserve to be playing at the next level. And I feel like it's just, you know, a, the bulk of the work's done. So, you know, just these, these last couple of weeks, you know, just trying to maintain – our strength, conditioning, speed, all that stuff, and then just, you know, get to enjoy it with family, which is, uh, you know, the, the best part of this whole process. Jalen, this is such a unique time and experience for a player. Very few get the opportunity to chase their NFL dream. I know it can feel a little bit too individualistic at times, but you've been able to room with CJ at the NFL Draft Combine. You you played down at the Shrine Bowl together in Texas. How valuable is it to share this experience with a Crusader teammate? I mean, it's huge. Uh, you know, I feel like, you know, we're the first to do it in however many years. And then to have us both do it at the same time is, you know, it's surreal. You know, I mean, I feel like, you know, we're just so blessed, so fortunate, you know, and it comes from, you know, Holy Cross and giving us, you know, not only academics, but also the ability to play athletically and then achieve our dreams in that realm as well. So, you know, it's just, it's awesome. CJ, did you have a pinch me moment when you two were were bunked up in Indianapolis at the NFL Draft Combine saying, can you believe we're here? I think I think that pinch me moment happened when we were at the Shrine Bowl, when we both, like, we found out that when we got it, like, when we saw he w walked in the room, I was like, Jalen, I got it. He threw his hands up. He was like, I got it. And I think that was really the most surreal moment. We just uh, brothers that are finally getting their goals. And like, we're now the 1% of 1% of what we've been training to do our whole life. And that, that passion, that bond that we've created over these last five years just keeps getting bigger and bigger with the next steps we take in our life. And it's, it's special to have somebody there. And I mean, it was the experience just got 10 times better and he's always there to have somebody to talk to. We're going through the same stuff. So it's, it's, it's a special thing. I'm so glad you pointed out that 1% of 1% of 1%, the talent pool gets smaller at every level. But the good news is we're seeing more Crusaders walk down this path. Liam Anderson, Benton Whitley have gone through the process recently. CJ, what did you learn from their previous journeys to the NFL? Yeah, you just see how hard of a work workers they are. Um, Liam and Benton are guys that will, in the weight room, off the field, on the field, do everything in their power to get better and do their job and and be really good people off the field too and be exceptional friends and teammates and mentors to people around them so uh, i think they're they've been tremendous with helping us going through this process and you know they're they're inspirations to guys like us and guys that are still on the team that are pushing for what we are going through right now so it's special to have you know leadership that we've gone through be in the uh, in the position we're going to be next year. So it's it's always great to have that helping hand, and they're always open to any questions. So they're the best. Jalen, you and CJ were just the third and fourth Holy Cross players ever to receive invites to the NFL Draft Combine, following Peter Muldoon and the great Gordy Lockbaum. How did it feel to join that rare company and and start showing what you learned and how you grew as a player with Holy Cross? It was an honor, you know, to be invited, you know, but like my, my main thing was like, I know me and CJ can play ball, you know, so to go in there and have everyone, you know, not be this like, oh my gosh, you're so much better than me. Or like everyone is just completely out of our league, like to, to fit right in there with that group of the elite talent, you know, that that's something that I was really looking forward to do. And that kind of came from the all-star games and everything like that, you know, 
coming from Holy Cross, you're not expecting them to be like these great players, but then we show up and it's like, oh, wow, these kids can really play. So that was the biggest thing for me, um, you know, meeting all with, with the coaches, our orientation group and like, you know, kind of picking the brains of some of the guys like, um, that were there, you know, it was, it was a really fun experience. CJ, Jalen brings up a good point. You're representing not just Holy Cross, but really an entire level of football. You were two of just 15 FCS players that were invited to the Combine. What would you say is the factor of FCS football and talent that people at the top level of the game just still haven't figured out yet? What's What makes this level so much better than people expect? I think it's it's the bonds that football creates and that's driving and that's always going to over uh, overpower a just somebody who's good. People who are relentless and will give anything for their teammates and really push the boundaries of what a team is. And I think that creates more of a powerful football team than, say, multiple good players. And, uh, you know, I think you more often than not, when you get uh, kids in this level, you want th those kids want to play bad and they think they – didn't get they sense they didn't get the uh opportunity fbs they're they're like i deserve that and i'm gonna give it my all and that's what kind of what happened to me it was like i wasn't highly recruited i got here but i knew i was gonna give it my all and it kind of just worked out and it was blessed because we got great coaching and teammates that will be my brothers for the rest of my life so it it's special that you know coming from a place like Holy Cross being so good and being the, being able to be like, yeah, I have five rings. Like yeah. I'm, I'm a winner and knowing that anybody against us would have, would have failed to, to, to beat us. So I think that brotherhood is the biggest, the biggest part of football and what I think the FCS does so well. There's so many tight knit programs like that South Dakota state team. And I got to get to know them at the East West and, uh, and combined and they couldn't have been nicer dudes and and more more like us pushing for uh being a small school guy and and it was truly incredible i like to envision you just taking those five patriot league championship rings and just knocking them on the table when you talk with an nfl scout or exec uh jaylen i wanted to ask you about pro day at holy cross to see 30 NFL scouts, all those logos from the top level of the game inside Luth, where you've put in so many hours of hard work. What does that say about where Holy Cross has been and where it's going next? Well, I mean, I think it shows that, you know, people are starting to take notice of us and they're starting to take us serious and they're starting to, you know, realize like, you know, it's not just a fluke. Like you said, Benton, Liam, now me and CJ, like it's just going to continue to snowball into more and more prospects, more and more talent. So, you know, I just... It's, it's an amazing feeling to see everyone there. But, you know, I feel like I speak for a lot of the team when I say, you know, we deserve that for all the work we put in, for all the for all the players that, you know, have come in and out of here that have, you know, changed how Holy Cross does things, you know, on the football field, you know. So I feel like it's just um, an amazing testament to, you know, Coach Chez, all the players that came before me and Siege and just, you know, we're just hoping that that, you know, snowball effect continues for, you know, Joe Pazanski, Jordan Fuller, you know, all those guys, Justin Shorter, all those guys that are going to be making that next up here very soon. No doubt the future is bright for Holy Cross. Let's take a short break. When we return, we'll dig deep with Jalen Coker about his path to the NFL draft right here on Sater Stories. We are UMass Memorial Health, and innovation is something that defines us that drives us to discover new ways to provide answers and hope, to provide opportunity and access and equity for everyone, to redefine what medicine can do and how it can heal relentlessly. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. 
and the right way to film it is in slow motion. Obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Leadership and excellence in competition, in the classroom, in the community. For decades, Crusader Athletics has focused on our topmost commitment, elevating every student athlete. To reach for more, to grow more, to achieve more. Help us to continue to strengthen minds, build character, and celebrate together as one Crusader nation. Because when we commit together, we win together. Join us, Crusaders Together. Get a sneak peek of the 2024 Holy Cross football team this Saturday, April 13th, during the Crusaders spring game. The five-time defending Patriot League champs will kick off at 3 p.m. Admission is free, absolutely free for everyone. You don't even need a ticket to get in. So come join us Saturday, April 13th at 3 p.m. for the Crusaders spring game. Welcome back to Sater Stories, presented by UMass Memorial Health. I'm Kevin Gale, voice of the Crusaders, joined by the greatest receiver in Holy Cross football history. Yes, I said it, Jalen Coker. Jalen, when you hear that phrase, greatest receiver in Holy Cross history, what comes to mind as you look back on your long Crusader career? Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing that comes to mind is, you know, everyone that's been that's given me the ability to be in this position, you know, coming in like with COVID and stuff, like I'm a freshman, I have no idea what's going on, but then having, you know, like, Matt Considine and, you know, Kendo and Tanny Ayani and all these guys that, you know, they don't need to talk to the to, to the young freshmen, but they're they're building me up and they're helping me, you know, figure out the playbook. They're helping me, you know, understand where I'm going wrong in team meetings and stuff like that. Like, so I think it all stems from just that winning culture that they have bred and, you know, just it's a great group of, group of guys that really have just, you know, that took me under their wing and, you know, showed me that, you know, this is the way to do it. And if you follow these steps, you're going to be successful. You've learned a lot from some of those great leaders of the past you mentioned. And we saw that translate into some of the greatest clutch catches in Holy Cross history. FCS playoff game winner at home. Hail Mary walk off at Buffalo. But your very best catch may have just been at the Hula Bowl All-Star game back in January. One-handed TD grab. How did that clip, that highlight going viral online, gain you an even bigger audience than you had at Holy Cross? Yeah, well, I mean, I feel like doing it at practice is one thing, but then doing it in the game, you know, everyone has your eyes on you. Like, it's not just people watching, but then you, you got all the fans, and, you know, everyone's there and all the eyes are on the game. So then doing that in the game was, it was really cool. Uh, you know, hearing the announcers be like, it wasn't a catch, it wasn't a catch. And then going back and looking at it, you get the knee down, arms the down. Catch. So I feel like it's just... Um, you know, I just it's just a bigger opportunity for me to showcase my ability, showcase my talents, you know, um, and everyone's starting to know. But, you know, some people still don't. And that's going to keep motivating me to, you know, get better. There's one superstar who really knows Steve Smith, former NFL All Pro receiver, now a big time media personality. He broke down a ton of your game tape and said, I love Jalen Coker and then compared you to a Hall of Fame basketball player. In Tim Duncan, I thought that was really interesting. When you heard that breakdown and the way that Steve Smith talks about your game, what gives you the most pride in the work that you've done so far? Um, I mean, I feel like, you know, kind of like CJ was echoing a little bit earlier, like I haven't been the most recruited guy. I was overlooked, you know, so I feel like I kind of have that, that chip on my shoulder, like, you know, all right, I'm going to prove you wrong and I'm going to go out here and show you why I'm better than you, you know, so – having that check of approval from Steve Smith, you know, that's one of my dad's favorite receivers. So then, you know, if he's saying it, then it's gotta be true. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but no, it, it was really cool how you did it too. Like we were just at the combine. He just pulled me aside and he was like, you know, like, I really like your game. You're my sleeper. You know, he keeps saying, um, not anymore though, because he mentioned me apparently, but, um, you know, it's just, it's just an amazing blessing. And I'm just, I'm just so thankful that, you know, my work ethic, my, you know, strive to be the greatest you know is starting to show up and people are starting to take notice so you know all i can do is just say thank you to steve and just you know you know ho ho hopefully we go farther than just tim duncan hopefully we can get a little a jerry rice or something in there towards the end of the career but you know hall of famers hall of famer you know absolutely
Yeah, you said it right. What a cool experience with Steve Smith. Uh, when you worked out at that NFL Combine, you actually led all wide receivers in vertical jump. I, I would love to know how you built your skill sets even stronger this offseason, getting ready for NFL scouts. Uh, I was just coming in to work every day. I mean, seriously, like just coming in, working hard, um, not really thinking about because I mean, coming in, I was a PFA, like maybe seventh round guy. Like, so like to go from that to, you know, wherever I'm projected now, which isn't that, you know, luckily, but like just I was going into work every day, regardless of what anyone was saying, regardless of how anyone felt about me. Like I wasn't in the media. No one knew who I was coming out. So it was like how I gained traction before stepping on the field was working hard in the weight room, working hard when I'm going through the drills, buying into everything that our coach at X3 was saying, Jordan Llewellyn, you know, like just coming to work every day with a good attitude, you know, trying to get better each step of the way. And part of that preparation for the draft two weeks out is actually teaming up with a familiar name, Bob Chesney, down at James Madison University, you're a Virginia native. Coach Chez has moved into your backyard. What's that been like to sort of cross paths down there in Virginia again? Yeah, you know, it's very cool. I'm here right now. And, you know, I was talking with him the other day. You know, we're sitting down, going over plays, just going over how it's like in JMU. What's the difference between here and, the, you know, just kind of chopping it back up. We haven't been able to do in a while. I get to see pretty much every coach that we had at Holy Cross, like just at JMU, which is the funniest thing. Um, but, you know, just, yeah, talking with them and just, you know, telling them how, what I've been going, what's been going on with me and, and them sharing that with me and just kind of, I I miss that, you know, like having like a, such a tight knit group that we had when we were at Holy Cross, you know, um, it, it was awesome. It was great to see those guys again and talk with them. It really is a small world. Uh, you've been projected as a mid round pick in the NFL draft. So most likely day three on Saturday, maybe a surprise on Friday. We'll see, but how will you, your family, your friends, friends back home be following the draft leading up to this potential pick it's got to be a little nerve-wracking honestly no not really it's not nerve-wracking because you know like I said earlier like I was projected PFA coming in like no one really knows what's going to happen until it happens so like I, all I'm all I can do the, the waiting is like I, I just want to get it over with so I can just go to a team and get to work you know but um it's just I'm I'm blessed. I'm thankful. You know, I'm going to have a whole party with my family at my house. My mom's getting everyone, you know, to come over. We're going to make it a good time. So um, I'm just glad that I have, you know, a great support system that's going to be with me um, through this entire process. You know, wherever that is, if it's if it's second round, if it's PFA, it, you know, whatever it is, it doesn't matter to me. As long as I get on that team and I get to, you know, showcase my abilities to that team, I'm going to make sure I earn my keep there. Jalen, I know I speak for countless Crusaders when I say thank you for all that you did for Holy Cross football. We wish you a long and incredible NFL career. It was an honor for me to call your games and some of those spectacular catches, and we'll all miss watching you here in Worcester. Best of luck at the next level. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure, honestly, like going out there every day and knowing that, you know, it's, I feel like the BC game just is, is a perfect example how we're going to be at BC and we have more fans than them and our fans are sitting in the rain waiting us to come back out for two hours. Like some of those kids on VC didn't even want to play. I bet our fans would have threw the pads on right then and there and hopped out on the field. And you know what I'm saying? So I feel like just playing for that, you know, crowd every day, whether it's home away, didn't matter. Like it was really easy for me to go out there, you know, give it all I had. Cause I knew that the amazing community that we've built here that's been here has will always have our back. So absolutely. Thank you. I know we'll never forget that day as well. You and your teammates definitely belonged on that field on that day. Thank you again, Jalen. Great to Absolutely. see you. Thank you. Let's take one last break. When we return, CJ Hansen rejoins to talk about his goals in the NFL right here on Sater Stories. We are UMass Memorial Health, and innovation is something that defines us, that drives us to discover new ways to provide answers and hope, to provide opportunity and access and equity for everyone to redefine what medicine can do and how it can heal relentlessly. Many financial advisors are commission-based advisors that work for a bank. At Car Financial, we work for you. Our primary focus is helping our clients achieve their goals. You worked hard in your career You've earned your retirement. Now let us show you how to make the most out of what you have. 
We're here to answer your investment, retirement, income tax, and estate planning questions. Through every stage of life, we're here for you. Call us at Carr Financial Group today. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. At Fuel America, we've created a place for people to gather, to share their stories. We are a destination and we are a starting point because Fuel America is not just our name, it's our mission. Holy Cross football season tickets are available beginning April 11th. Secure your seats at Fit and Field to see the five-time defending Patriot League champs all season long in 2024. For more info and to see the best membership options, visit GoHolyCross.com slash tickets. Welcome back to Seder Stories presented by UMass Memorial Health. I'm Kevin Gale, voice of the Crusaders, joined by Holy Cross All-American offensive lineman, C.J. Hansen. C.J., for players at the skill positions, it's easy to point to all-time greats. Tom Brady, Jerry Rice, Barry Sanders. When you dreamed of becoming an offensive lineman in the NFL, who did you look up to as a role model? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, I mean, obviously, Jason Kelsey. Uh, he's a guy that has been doing it for so long and, you know, he's the greatest to ever do it. And now he's such a social media personality that it's kind of all fell that way. But any old lineman in the league that, that does there and is at the top of their game, I mean, I'm, I'm in love with, but I would say him, Quentin Nelson, all the big names, uh, everybody, basically. I just, I literally watch the O line when I watch NFL so, I mean, I'll take anybody who's doing their job really well. I think more people should watch the line play in the NFL because I don't think the average fan has any idea how incredibly fast and strong NFL linemen are, regardless of their size. You've been called one of the most athletic offensive linemen available in this draft. But when we were talking off air, you said it was actually your intelligence and your football IQ that you picked up at Holy Cross that's really starting to stand out in these NFL team interviews. How do you feel like that's paying dividends now leading up to draft day? Yeah, it's it's incredible. Uh, I mean, I'm just so prepared. And and most of it, most of it's just uh, memory retention. And they give you a play, you teach it back to them after 15 minutes of doing something else. And, you know, being able to complete those in such a way I think it's just a testament to what my study habits my time management skills and my compartmentalization in my in my brain has done at Holy Cross and uh, I'm lucky to be in the position I am and be able to do that but not only to the education at Holy Cross but my coaching and uh, I met with a met with a former GM uh, doing like interview prep for the combine. And when I told him coach Smith went to the giants, he was like, you have to say that to every single scout to know wow. that your coach of four years is at that level now means that you're like, that it makes sense. Like it makes sense why you're going to the league. Cause you already, your coach is already there. So if you follow him, everything he said, you should be there. So, I mean, it, it's special that I had the coaches that I had, the education that I had. It's all just helping me out, and it's super beneficial. And the one thing that's the craziest thing to me is the amount of Holy Cross people that I've met in the past two months from teams, from any, anywhere, I'd, or people that know people that went to Holy Cross. It, it is incredible. Half the Giants staff is from Holy Cross. And then you lost one when Coach Smith left, but – I mean, I'm just I'm meeting people and it's it's been awesome. Coach Smith, one of the all time great leaders on a Holy Cross offensive line now reteamed with Coach Chesney down at JMU. But the Holy Cross thread is still strong. And these job interviews really do demand a lot of football intelligence. I think a lot of people think you throw up some game tape, you say that's a guy we want and then you bring them into training camp. You're learning pretty quickly that you have to interview for a job just like an accountant, an executive, anybody going out into the wanted ads. 
Yeah, you got to be prepared. Um, you're meeting not only with coaches that are going to coach you, head coaches that are going to be the, the big man when you get to that team, and then you're going to be talking to the billionaires that run that team, the GMs. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's it's a job interview. The whole combine is a job interview. The East-West Shrine Bowl is a whole interview. It's just the, those were two weeks of just straight interviews the whole time, 24-7 surveillance on you, make sure – you're the guy we want. And, uh, and I think that's what helps you so much and being invited to those. It's, it gives you an exposure that at this level you can't get. And, you know, when you can't get exposure at this level, they want to look at you more, especially if you're doing stuff that is good. So I think that's why me and Jalen were put in a good spot. Uh, our mentalities and our work ethic, the five years here translated into the East West Shrine Bowl very well. And a lot of people liked, liked what they saw. So I think, uh, it was tremendous and those job interviews did nothing but help us so i'm glad you mentioned the east west shrine bowl a legacy senior all-star game it's been around going on a hundred years now what did you enjoy most about that difficult sort of audition week in frisco texas what made it fun for you yeah i think the biggest thing is playing with other people and playing against bigger and better people um playing against guys you watch on TV, simply put it. And, uh, you know, for me, I think one of the biggest things for me that I had a lot of fun with was playing with those South Dakota guys. And, uh, you know, they ended our season twice, a little bit salty about that. But, uh, you know, they were just such excellent dudes and phenomenal players. And I think on our starting offense, we had like six or seven of us from the F uh, FCS. And we scored five out of our six drives. So it just wow. – it just showed that, you know, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. We, we're going to, who wants it more? That's, that's what it was. And you could, and you could tell in those games that those S FCS kids wanted it more. And uh, I think that was one of the big special things, but I think the th biggest special thing about the Shriners Bowl is the Shriners Children's Hospital and being able to interact with those kids and, you know, playing for something bigger than just football. And I think that's always what football should be. You know, here we had Holy Cross, that pride behind Holy Cross, that the the team bonding we had, like everything around it, it's playing for something else. And that's what the Shriners Hospital did, playing Duck, Duck, Goose with those kids for an hour. Just, you know, it brings a smile to your head. You leave the earth for a little bit and you're just, you know, you're with, you're in the moment. And it was such an incredibly done and it was a great time and it, it warmed my heart a hundred percent. And uh, I would love to continue to help them out whatever I can. So it was, it was special. Serving a greater good. And I'm sure you'll have more opportunities to make a difference when you start playing on Sundays. Um, when we were talking previous, you had said that your junior year of high school, maybe you didn't get the opportunities that you expected. It may have limited your college choices, but in the end, it almost felt meant to be that you ended up at Holy Cross where, where you can really have it all. Can you put into words how well prepared you are for this moment? Thanks to Holy Cross. Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm a hundred percent prepared. Um, the people that I, I think the first place where you, where I want to start is the people I have behind me that are in my circle that are willing to help me out at any time. Of course I have my mom, which, She's the best. She's the saint. She does everything. Been team mom for Holy Cross for the last five years. She wants it more than I do at this point. This place has given me also so much. It, it's it's prepared me so well that the care not the, the the worries aren't there. Like I don't worry about when the draft comes around. I'm gonna have everybody there with me, and it's gonna be great no matter what. And uh, I'm prepared for what comes next because I know through the last two months of training, being around people, I know I have an edge on some people. I know I, I know I can do more to get better, but I know I'm going to be able to do it quicker than most people. And lastly, CJ, I've got to ask you to take us maybe five or 10 years into the future. We know Jalen's position. He's going to be catching passes. But you as an interior lineman, this is sort of like a choose your own adventure. How do you see this playing out positions between right guard, left guard, center? Where are we going to see you in a couple of years? Yeah, hopefully, hopefully starting uh, and uh, anywhere. Um, I would play for any team at any position. Uh, 
I'm intrigued by center. I like being a leader. I like being the leader of the offensive line. Uh, I think it fits my personality well, just being who I am. But I know I have to take steps to get there, and I that's what the NFL team will do to me. But um, it's all exciting. You know, being able to say, oh, yeah, I'm an NFL athlete. I'm going to be blocking the best in the world. I'm going to be blocking huge people. I'm going to be blocking for huge people. I'm going to have a guy that gets paid hundreds of millions of dollars behind me, and I'm the reason he doesn't get hurt. So it, it's – it's incredible. Um, it's surreal. I always had the little thought in my head that I was going to be here, but you never, like it never, it never really hits you. I don't think it will hit me until I'm on a team. I've been kind of just floating through space for the last two months, just getting one objective done after the other. And, uh, I think that's what Holy Cross prepared you for, you know, the future holds all the end of, end of Chesney's prayer right before the game for the future holds all things now. And the future holds all things now. You got to be in the now to be able to get, to see the future. So, and you got to control what you can control and just take what you get and do your best with it. And you should be fine. So. CJ, I absolutely believe you when you look ahead to play in center in the NFL, you won a ton of games at Holy Cross. You got five Patriot league, Patriot league rings to prove it. And you were an all time great offensive lineman here at Holy Cross. We wish you all the best at the next level. And we hope to see you back around Worcester again in the future when you're a big time NFL player. <laughs> oh, I'll, be, I'll be here my whole life. Uh, it's, that's guaranteed. The I bleed, uh, I breed purple. Um, and I already taught the alumni that are here have shown me how much pride, like how much pride they have in it. Wants me that makes me want to put more into it. You know what I mean? Just seeing how they, how much they care about us and what we're going through and how much that means to them. And, like, even after my interview at Pro Day, like, I had alumni call, texting me saying, like, beautiful. Like, you're you're the man at Holy Cross. Like, that wow. that couldn't have been said better. And that, that really sticks with me. And uh, I will forever love this place. And I will forever give back as much as I can to it. Because I don't think I would be here without it. So We love to hear that. Thank you again, CJ. We can't wait to hear your name called in the NFL draft. Best of luck. Appreciate you. Thank you. That'll do it for this episode of Seder Stories. You can tune in to the NFL Draft beginning Thursday, April 25th and continuing Friday, April 26th and Saturday, April 27th on ESPN and NFL Network as Jalen Coker and CJ Hansen await their names to be called. We thank Jalen and CJ for joining us and we thank you all for tuning in. Tell your friends they can tune into Seder Stories on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. And as always, if you love hearing these stories from Crusaders, please leave us a five-star rating and review. Thanks again for tuning in to Seder Stories. I'm Kevin Gale. Go Cross Go. <laughs>